Well, good morning, YouTube land out there. You are back. Thank you for coming back to our inspirational content once again. I don't take that for granted, and I pray that all is well in your life on this morning. Today, we're going to read 1 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, and today is our 247th day to this awesome Bible challenge. Amen. And we're going to read 1 Samuel, like I said, from the, um, the, um, which version, uh, the Amplified Version. Um, please follow along to the best of your ability. Uh, we're going to read uh, today's lesson, and then just before the summary, I'm going to piggyback to yesterday's lesson. It was only 15 verses in that lesson, so I'm going to uh, read the 11th through the 15th just to bring us up to date to today's lesson, okay? So let's get ready and get started. I'm having water this morning. Keep me in your prayers. I uh, got to start back drinking more water. I had coffee a couple of times uh this week and i'm starting to feel the effects of it so i won't be having coffee for the next few days um let's get ready and get started um so david departed and escaped to the cave Adullam, and when his brothers and all his father's house heard it they went down there to him and everyone in distress or in debt or discontented gathered to him and he became a commander over them and there were with him about 400 men and David went from there to Mizpah of Moab and he said to the king of Moab let my mother uh, and my let my mother of Moabite descent and my mother I pray come out of Judah and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the mountain fastness. Then the prophet Gad said to David, Do not remain in the stronghold. Leave and get into the land of Judah. So David left and went into the forest of Harath. Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him. Saul was sitting in Gibeah under the tamarisk tree on the height, his spear in his hand, and all his servants standing around him. Saul said to his servants who stood about him, Here now, you Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards, and make you all commanders of thousands and hundreds? that all of you have conspired against me. No one discloses to me when my son makes a league with the son of Jesse. None of you is sorry for me or discloses that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie and wait as this day. <clears throat> then Do Doeg, Doeg, the Adamite, who stood with Saul's servants, said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Nob, to Amalek, son of Ahitub, and Amalek inquired of the Lord for him, and gave him provisions and the sword of uh, Goliath, the Philistine. And may God add a blessing to the reader of his word. I know y'all remember that part from yesterday, those of y'all who's been following this Bible challenge faithfully and everything. Um, Doeg was that that powerful, violent uh, servant that was at the uh, priest's uh, the church, was at the temple yesterday when David was there. Remember, we talked about that. He was right there. And then uh, when David saw him, uh, he asked the priest for a sword. He knew he was going to need some type of weapons on him. He knew that was trouble when he saw him. Uh, well, that guy is, um, that guy is Saul's uh, head herdsman, something like that. So let's go back to 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter, the 11th verse. Uh, the servants of Achish said to him, Is not this David the king of the land? So remember, David had went back to uh, enemy camp. He he ran away from the uh, priest. He didn't stay with the priest. He, he continued to run, and he ran to... Um, he went to Achish, king of Gath. So, uh, in the 11th verse, where you all uh, should have picked back up at once we uh, closed the video yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, the servants of 
Achish said to him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances? Saul had slain his thousands, and David hit his ten thousands. David took these words to heart and was much afraid of Achish, king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and pretended to be insane in their Philistine hands and scribbled on the gate doors and drooled on his beard. Then said Achish to his servants, You see the man is mad? Why, why then have you brought him to me? Have I need of mad men? Then you bring this fellow to play the mad man in my presence. Shall this fellow come into my house? You know, David and got himself in a web, okay? Uh, so all these lies, it, it actually uh, led up to him becoming a major actor. I mean, he's, he's a major actor. God helped him to pull it off, though. I mean... He, he, he played like a madman, and he was able to escape out of the enemy camp. So picking back up today's summary, bringing you, you all up to date. I just love this story that, um, I, that's why I've been taking my time with this, uh, the, the David uh, summaries uh, this week. And I hope you all is enjoying it. I hope you're getting something out of it. Uh, I hope you all are getting out of it what I'm getting out of it, that it just pays to stay with God. It pays to be obedient to God. It pays to not uh, sway back and forth because once you start swaying back and forth, you find yourself in a web. You find yourself in a web. And, and David, as I told you all, as we read together, David is the apple of God's eye. Uh, and um, it doesn't mean he was a perfect man, but it does mean that his heart, uh, God God knew David's heart. So let's go ahead. Uh, a prophet named Gad tells David he needs to find a new hiding place because Saul is getting increasingly more paranoid. Saul blames his men for not knowing that Jonathan was helping David. Obviously, it's their job to know about Jonathan's life, not Saul's. And I think that was kind of sarcastic, but... I guess they are supposed to know that though, right? It might not be a sarcastic um, um, view from the writer at all. It might be true. Saul leaves. Saul learns that David went to Amalek and his sons for help. So Saul sends for them. When they come, Saul questions Amalek because he wants to know why the priests helped David. Amalek explains he had no reason to suspect David because he's the king's son-in-law. Sounds innocent enough. I mean, the priest was put in, in a situation. Remember when we read that yesterday? The, the priest kind of felt something wasn't right because David came along and he was wondering why was somebody with the type of um, position that David would be in, why was he be wondering and, and the town of Judah alone and everything. But then David had lied to him and told him that he was on a secret mission for King Saul. And he told him that he had sent the men in another direction for, you know, he couldn't tell them why because it was a secret mission. So the priest fell for it. Saul doesn't like this answer and orders the priest and his sons to be put to death. Saul, like, he ain't falling for it. He... He just, he just angry. He just being evil right now. Saul is being selfish right now. All he's thinking about is this priest helped uh, David to get away. That's all he's thinking about. Saul's mercenary herdsman dude, Duag, the guy that was at the church at the time, does the evil for him. He's the one... That, that told Saul, yeah, I saw him. Yeah, I saw him. He was there with, with the priest uh, Amalek. I saw him there. The priest Amalek gave him food. It gave him lots of food. <laughs> so, Dueg takes it 100 steps further and slaughters all the women, children, livestock in that town. This man was so evil, low down and dirty. He was supposed to uh, just kill the, the family members of, um, of, of uh, Amalek. 
He, he turned around, killed all the women, children, livestock in the town. Mm-mm-mm. Amalek's son, Abiathar, escapes and joins David. So one of his sons, God allowed to escape, and he met up with David. David says that he knew that bad would come from Duag, seeing him with Amalek. And he takes the responsibility for all of the deaths of Abathar's family. Hmm. Wow. Some consequences. Consequences. The consequences of our actions. Sometimes we can fall short. And the consequences not be as uh, brutal. But this consequence from David was pretty brutal, y'all. Pretty brutal. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word and his summary. Um, please like the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Please hit the notifications for future uploads to this channel. And try to have a very good day. And keep us in your prayers. And I keep you all in my prayers. I love you all. And thank you for tuning in today. Today is Tuesday. And yesterday, y'all, uh, I did not say Happy Valentine's Day. Because to be honest, I completely forgot. By the time I did the recording, I didn't even realize it was Valentine's Day. So happy belated Valentine's Day to you all. And to me, y'all. Uh, Valentine's Day might be an official holiday on February 14th, but baby, it's okay. It's appropriate to say happy Valentine's Day today as well. Enjoy yourselves. If you didn't get that chocolate yesterday, pick it up today. Bye.